have this question on aggregate planning. Well, we want to analyze what type of aggregate planning we're going to use. There are so many methods, there are actually two, where there is level capacity planning and we have the matching demand. But let's see what the question is all about and it will guide us to know which one we're going to use here. So you have the following, Sally Fabrication has created the following aggregate plan for the next five months. So you have August through to December. They will give you the demands for each month and also the planned production. Assume that Sally will have nothing in inventory at the end of July. Sally employs a thousand production assembly workers and it takes one production assembly worker five minutes to assemble one unit of finished good. The unit is completed. The unit is complete at that point. Each production assembly worker can provide 150,000 hours of assembly time a month. We sorry, a month, and then they asked us that without requiring overtime pay, please answer the following questions. Sally wants to complete this plan without working any overtime in assembly. Logically, how many additional production assembly workers should Sally hire at the end of August? So, first of all, before you know how many workers to hire, it's about first of all knowing how many workers are required in a month first in that particular month or give it be it a quarter or what. So, let me show you what you do. So, this question here, we want to determine what method are we using first. Is it uh, level capacity or matching or chest demand? How do you know which is which? In level capacity, there's a trick. The planned production is constant throughout the period. That's how you know that, okay, here I'm applying level capacity knowledge. Then in matching demand or chase, what happens is that the planned production will have to match the demand. So if you've seen the demand, they should be equal. Like August is 1.5. Even the plan should have also been 1.5. That's usually how it works in chase demand or matching. Now in level capacity, there's just one fixed or constant planned uh, production. So here we are working on a question which is level capacity, which is level capacity, yes, and how we're going to determine the workers, we'll just need to know, we'll just need to use the figures there for planned production, and we will, there will be no need to calculate for each month the number of workers needed in each and every month, like individually. Only matching demand requires that because it gets to have different production plans due to the OSIS. The demand that is that keeps changing so you're just trying to keep matching you keep matching so, so you keep finding the number of uh, workers for each and every now in level capacity since it's constant and you need the planned production in order to determine your your planned number of workers you need to just get the figure there in the planned production just one of them it will apply for the rest that's the good part with the level capacity let's do that so we know in order to find the number of workers you need to first take note of the planned production it's two million what are you multiplying this plant production by? You want to know how long it takes to produce all these 2 million units that they have plans to produce. Well, they've said that it's 5 minutes per unit. Now, remember, then they are level cap the assembly, the assembly that they are making in, it's, it's in terms of hours. So we want to always convert things in the same range so as to have things in the same line of thought. So, 5 minutes in terms of hours could be just expressed as a fraction. You can even use 1 over 12, actually, which are going to multiply. So, you know, the total, total time they will spend. So, this is, as, this is 5 minutes in terms of hours. Just You can express that, that, that expression there. Yeah. Then, the next thing is that you're going to divide the whole thing over the total time that will be spent in a month. Yeah, and then they told us that it's 150,000 that the assembly requires that 150 hours in a given month. So that's what you're dividing because you're planning for a given month, right? So therefore, you should divide by the total time that they will equally spend in a month, which is the 150 hours. The half this side, the 1 over 2 of this side is just representing the time spent per unit. Now, to make all the 2 million in the whole month, what would be the total time? That's what I'm multiplying. The time times the total units so they you know the overall and then overall time that the workers now should spend in the assembly is 150 in a month so then when you divide everything you find that it's even going to give you something like this we'll just round it off to 
the nearest whole number, triple oh, four ones, which is just 1,111 workers are needed in each month. Because as we said, level capacity, once you just determine the workers using the plant demand, it will apply because the plant demand is the same. If you've noticed, huh? it is the same throughout the, the quarters. And like in matching or chest demand, you find that, okay, maybe August would have this. The other month has a different one. And that's what you'd have to start doing for each individual. That's what I was trying to explain the point. Now in level capacity, you just calculate for one. It's applying for the rest of the months. Those will be required in each of the months coming up. Now look at this company hired, or this company, sorry. Yeah, this company employed a thousand workers. How many more do you think they will need to hire? That's what they had asked. Huh? How many more do you think they need to hire? If they had a thousand workers, you now have the requirement for each month is 111. 1,111. You know that you just need 111 workers more to be hired. That's how you answer the first question. Done. That's part A. We move on to part B of the same question. What will be the ending inventory during the month of October? So when calculating ending inventory, there's just a certain formula that we use that helps us easily calculate the opening, the closing of any given period. So I want to show it on the next screen so that you get to see how we'll do that. Well, this formula you're looking at on the screen is the one that helps us determine ending inventory in any given period, given a month or quarter. So what we are going to do is understanding the symbols. This here is what we are looking for, our ending inventory. This other one here, the E T minus one stands for the the previous the previous month or quarter's ending inventory. They will tell us something in the question even before we we start this process, because they said something in the earlier paragraph that uh, July, the one before August, did not have anything to zero. Therefore, if you look at the ending inventory from before, that's what T minus one stands for. There will be zero here. What about plus what? What's in the brackets? P. P is the production in the current period. That's what P stands for, production in the current period. There is a 2 million if we saw that in the paragraph, huh? in the question, sorry. 2 million, you just squeeze it in here. Minus demand. What's the demand in the month we are planning for? Because we're planning for, we want to know in October, but it's like it's a sequence. You know, you know, you know what August ends with? September opens without August in, uh, ended with. It's, it's like it's a sequence of opening, closing, store kind of scenario. So we want to know first of all what will close in August, what can go with that sequence. So there's supposed to be a 150 million. Just um, I just apologize for the sake of the space here, but it's 150 million. When you subtract the two, you should just land with this as the closing inventory, 500,000 for August. The procedure continues. We go to September. September will equally lead us to October, the one they are looking for. So let's find the closing in September, which will take us to October. So have a look at the table once again. We're going to September. September has got demand of 1.5 again. So even as we are substituting this formula, we know 1,500,000 1, 1, will be put there on demand. Whilst P standing for, of course, the production plan, it's the, it's the same. We said level capacity, it's the same throughout. That's a good part about the production plan in level capacity. Yeah, so we go back to our formula then substitute. So take note, we closed August with a 500,000, meaning as you go to September, this part which stands for E, T minus 1, it stands for the previous years or previous months closing and we are the 500,000 as we are starting September's calculation of the closing. So this is just a formula. If I'm finding closing inventory or anything, this is the formula we use. So again, we have the same, same production plan, 2 million minus demand is the same. It's actually 1,500,000. 1, 1, when you subtract the brackets and add what's outside, you're getting a million here as the closing for the month of September. We will start October now. So want to know the closing inventory in October. So we're actually going to use the same formula now that we know the previous month being September. So you see why we had to start all the way from uh, 
August because we needed to know the previous month's uh, closing before we we write the closing for October. It's, a, it's just, that's just how the formula is. So it works with the previous details and then of course shows for this next period. So the previous now being September has one million. Next we have the same thing in plant capacity, plant uh, production too. Demand is two as well. In uh, the month of October, demand is also two. When you subtract the two and add, you have the same here actually. Just a million. So October apparently has one million as the closing inventory. That was the the part B. That's how you had to answer part B. We are on part C. What is the average inventory during the month of September? What do they mean? When they say average inventory, they mean add opening plus closing, then divide by two. So they are looking at month of September. So let's do that on the next screen and you'll see what I'm actually talking about. So recall that August closed with 500, right? August closed with 500. So when we came to calculate the ending inventory in September, we used the 500,000 to know the, what will close in uh, the month of September. So the trick is what closes in a previous month becomes the opening in the next month. That's just, that's just how you should understand it. So August closed with 500,000, meaning in September, what would that 500,000 be called? It would be the opening. That's the reasoning there. And how do you find average inventory? It's opening plus closing over two. Then we do the same thing. So it's the 500,000 plus what what was the closing in September when we calculated it was 1 million. If you recall, just rewind a few minutes backwards in this, uh, was this video. Divide by 2. So on top, that's about 1.5. 1, 1.5 1, divided by 2. This is 750,000 units. By the way, this, this is inventory. Yeah? So the answer should be in units. I was just... Forgot, I just forgot to mention that in the previous part B, but these are units. Make sure if this is inventory, put it in units there. That's part C as well. Part D is asking us to calculate if the costs, if it costs Sally two kwacha to hold one unit of finished good in inventory for one month, what is the total holding costs of this five month plan? Well, what does this remind you of? By now, the knowledge of inventory management should have been cemented because this is why certain topics are taught before the others. Because this is just an application of inventory management under the holding costs and the like. So there's a formula actually on how to calculate uh, holding costs. It's just average inventory times the holding costs per unit. So average, remember we're finding average is why you add opening plus closing divided by two. That's the process. That's what we'll be doing for each of the months so that we can determine the holding costs per month because that's what they've put here. It's the holding costs in the month. And we'll do for August, September, October, November, and December so that we can sum up the all their costs together. That's what we're going to do here for the five-month plan. Let's do this. So let's start with uh, August. Does August have its inven average inventory? Okay, we didn't calculate, but let's go ahead. August, we said they were told that there was no opening in August. Why? Because the previous month, July, did not have any closing. That's why it's zero. So zero opening plus it's closed with a five, yeah, 500,000 divided by two. This month is just 250,000. That's August. Next, September. September, we found 750. No need to calculate. We are just from doing September. So it's like you have these two so far. The average inventory in September was 250. If you just 750, if you rewind the video. The next month is uh, October. October, we did not find the average. We only found its ending inventory. But let's find the average in October. Well, since we know September had closed with a, a million, therefore it became the opening in October plus October yet again closed with the same 1 million. So when you find an average, it's taking you back to 1 million again. I'm sure you've seen that. Huh? Yeah, so you can record that. Okay, October 1 million average inventory. 
go to november november has uh, not yet been determined not even it's closing so we can quickly know november is closing and then find the average so of course the sequence in the formula is the same e t minus one plus uh, open brackets p minus uh, d we know the planned production is 2 million. I'm just going to abbreviate and round off. I'm just going to debase all those zeros. And then the demand is 3. That's how it is for this month of uh, the month of uh, October. Then we know it started with a million because this is coming from that uh, particular previous month of uh, September. A million. Let me just put one there since we're debasing this. So we can try and answer this. Oh, sorry, by the way, this is November. We're calculating November's average. So we needed to know the closing in November. And then we would have to obviously do the same thing, opening plus closing. Now, apparently, these are in brackets, right? This would be negative one. This is positive one. So zero. November has no closing inventory. Therefore, what? how do we calculate the average? Okay, the good part is it's opening plus closing. Just remember that formula for average. We have opening of 1 million. Because the zero might deceive you that you're not going to do anything. But in actual sense, we have opening because it's opening plus closing to bind average. Then you find it's 500. You can record the, the month of November. Then what do you do? You want to know the holding costs. So now that you know the average event, you just start multiplying by the holding cost per unit. Times 2, times 2, times 2 everything times two there let's punch and find the answers now well we multiply now five hundred thousand here here it's going to be one million five hundred thousand the next one it's two million the third one the last the fourth one sorry gives us one million add everything was the one for the five month plan this gives me five million as the overall holding cost that's how you answer questions on aggregate demand so just take note some tips to remember there are two methods but how do you know which method you're using if it's level capacity we know that the planned production is fixed it doesn't change it remains constant whilst in the other one matching demand or chase strategy the other one what happens in, is that if let's say demand is five in maybe quarter one and then maybe this one is demand is now six what happens is that what you produce will always have to match the demand it, it changes that's why you would find that okay what you would do for this quarter will be different for again that's why you have to start solving for them individually if, in, if it is in terms of maybe workers they were like oh we started our question otherwise the concept is there are two methods and just know them from the tips so that's our video on aggregate demand, aggregate planning.